Hey everyone, I thought I'd show you the latest thing I've been working on. This is a large area x-ray detector. So last time I showed you my x-ray tube setup, and together uh, the detector and the tube will form a part of an imaging system. I built this detector by taking apart an x-ray image intensifying cassette. So these devices are used by medical personnel to image parts of the human body. So they put a piece of standard film inside the cassette, and the cassette has two phosphor screens inside that are pressed up against the film. And then when the x-rays hit the cassette, uh, the phosphors emit visible photons uh, after being struck by x-ray photons, and it's actually those visible light photons that expose the film. So it's possible to expose film directly with x-ray photons, but it's not a very efficient process. So the uh, phosphors are what actually get the job done. So this was a large cassette. It was a Lanx regular, and I'm not exactly sure what phosphor Lanx actually is. I've done a fair bit of searching. Um, it's green, and the, de the decay time is pretty quick from what I've been measuring so far, and I'll show you later. So to build the whole detector, I took the screen out and then uh, pasted it inside a coroplast uh, pyramid that I built. So coroplast is just uh, corrugated plastic that I bought at Tap Plastics and then put all the joints together with gaffer's tape. I made a small plastic flange on the lathe and then taped that in as well and then screwed in the photomultiplier tube mount into that. The photomultiplier tube is a Hamamatsu R6094 tube a fairly standard model and also the same one that I used in my electron microscope. The reason I chose this one is just because they're, they're relatively easy to find on eBay and I already had experience using one in the SEM project. The maximum voltage for this tube is 1500 volts so initially I was running it at about a thousand figuring that I didn't really need any more gain uh, but later I cranked it up to 1400 volts and was getting quite a bit more signal out of it. Initially, I thought that this detector didn't uh, find any background sort of cosmic rays or x-rays, but actually that's not true. I just didn't have it wired quite right. So after fixing all that up, uh, the amount of background detection is actually quite high, and you can hear it by the clicks on this uh, audio monitor right here. I configured the oscilloscope to output the trigger signal out this uh, calibration BNC port, and then plugged a really small low-cost audio amplifier into that. So every time the trigger, every time the scope triggers, it sends a click to the audio amplifier. I also set up the system with the x-ray tube pointing out into the shop, i.e. in the same direction that the detector is facing, and then turned on the tube uh, with a little lead aperture in front of it and measured the signal on the oscilloscope and was easily getting uh, a volt or two uh, just from the amount of, of x-ray scatter coming back from random items in the shop. I have the photomultiplier set up in a very simple configuration with just a 100 kilo ohm resistor between the anode and ground. So for the amount of current that comes out the anode on the tube, uh, a voltage will be created just based on the 100 k ohm resistor there. And I have no filtering set up, so the only amount of capacitance here is um, just what's inherent in the tube and the measuring device, i.e. the oscilloscope. What's interesting is I can set the trigger level on the oscilloscope to different levels and then only look for pulses of a certain height. And it seems that the decay time is on the order of 50 microseconds. Uh, right now the scope is set to 50 microseconds per division. So you can see that the trace is pretty much gone within 50 microseconds. So maybe the decay constant is, is more like 20 or 30 or something like that. The reason that I need a detector of this much area is because the backscattered uh, x-rays are low intensity and also spread out. So for this imaging application, the backscatter is going to cover a very large area, but it's fairly low intensity. So using a small detector like a Geiger-Muller tube is not effective. It's much better to have a, a larger area detector. Okay, I'll keep you posted on this project. See you next time. Bye.